Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. Today I'm going to be unboxing my brand new Cricut Joy that I've just received. Um, I am in need of some uh, cards to send out and so I thought it would be a great first project on the Cricut Joy. And I did purchase the refurbished one mainly because the regular uh, brand new ones are out of stock. I literally could not find them. So I purchased the refurbished one directly from Cricut. It still comes with the same one year warranty as a brand new one. And it still comes with all of the things that you would get if you purchased one brand new. So the machine is included. You get a blade in the housing. You get one of the fine point pins. You do get a standard grip mat. And then you get all the power adapters, a welcome card that tells you kind of how to do everything and materials to make a practice cut. Now I do already have Cricut Access, so I won't be needing that particular um, part of this box. You do need to have some sort of computer or mobile device and an internet connection because you have to connect to your Joy once you set it up and get it registered on the Quick Cricut website. Okay, let's go ahead and open the box and see what we have inside. So the first thing is to remove the protective material. Here is the Cricut Joy. This is so cute. And this is so tiny compared to my Maker 3. This is about um, 8 inches wide and 5 inches or 8 inches in length and 5 inches wide. So it's really small and compact. You know, this is good for putting on a small counter, taking it to my classroom. So get an envelope of information. Okay, there's more stuff down in the bottom here. Looks like you get the power cord and the adapter. So we'll get that plugged in here in just a minute. And it does come with a pin. Let me, let's see, let's get this unwrapped. It's definitely sealed very well. So here we go. All right. This is completely Bluetooth and it opens up and it's just so cute. I love it. Definitely going to have to decorate this and make a little tutorial for that. This looks like the blade housing. So we've got the blade in here, that would be the standard blade, and the little clamp for that. And that actually also is the same place that we will put a pin. So you just swap them out as you use them. And you've got the, the mat guides and the rollers. It looks really a lot like my maker. It's just really tiny. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this envelope. and. It has the warranty statement and it's got some looks like smart vinyl. This is permanent. It is gold in color and it does come with a standard grip mat, which is very nice because you absolutely need, unless you're using the smart vinyl, you need a mat. And then it comes with a setup guide. I've actually already set up a couple of things, so I am actually going to go into the Cricut Design Space and I'm going to go ahead and set up my new machine since I've actually done this a couple of times prior and then we will get it tested out. All right, here I am in Design Space and I'm going to go over to the top right and click on the down arrow by my name and go to settings and then my design space settings come up and I'm going to go to machines and I'm going to click on new product setup. Okay, I'm going to choose the smart cutting machine and then I have this cute little Cricut Joy. It does want you to make sure that you have at least 10 inches of space behind it and I'm going to hit the right arrow all right, and I actually just plugged this in a moment ago. My Joy machine actually showed up automatically, so my computer has already detected it, and I will hit continue. 
Okay. And I will go ahead and activate that. Okay, so my machine has been registered successfully through Cricut Design Space. I'm not gonna do a test cut, mainly because I've been using Cricut for a while. So with my maker, I'm pretty well versed in how things work. So I'm gonna skip for now. If you're absolutely brand new to Cricut, um, and have never used a machine before, I do suggest that you do not skip this step. It little allows you to try out a cut on your own without really, um, without having to learn while you're in the middle of a project. So the next thing is that over here in the top, now when I do my projects, I will have a choice between my Maker 3 or my joy. Let's go ahead and try a new project. I'm just going to search over here. Okay, and um, I need a sympathy card, and I'm going to do sympathy joy card, and then you'll get a plethora of things you can look through. And I will click on view all, and I think I'm going to use this one here comfort, tears, strength, and peace. And I'm going to click customize and it says joy on it up here in the top if I was using a different machine I would need to go ahead and select that other machine but I'm gonna leave it with joy in this particular image we have a couple of things going on we have the draw feature which is will allow us to use the pen and if I were to hide that, you would see the hearts go away. But I'll bring them back in. And then everything else except for the hearts, that's all the cut feature. And Cricut machines, they tend, well, they do the draw features first, and then you put your blade in and it does the cut features. Okay, let's go ahead and hit make and see what our options are. And you can do this without a mat if you have smart materials. You can put it on a regular um, light grip or standard grip mat. And um, you can put it on the Joy card mat, which is actually what I'm going to use today. So I'll select that and hit confirm. Okay, so on the card mat, which I'll show you in just a moment, it actually allows you to make three different sides of cards. And so I'm going to be coming over here. It says on card mat, um, I could change that if I need to, but I'm going to be selecting four and a quarter by five and a half. And that is a standard A2 sized card. And I know in design space, it is also referred to as an R20. And I think that's the international um, label for an A2 sized card. All right, so before I hit continue and do anything else in Cricut Design Space, let's head over to the overhead cam so I can show you the difference in the mats and how to set them up for cutting. Here are the three cutting mats that I have. We're going to be using the card mat today. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a moment. But this is that standard grip mat that came with the machine. So this is just like the regular green mat that you would have if you had a 12 by 12 in the larger machines. And then I did go ahead and purchase the light grip mat that was a four and a half by 12 and I will probably get a standard green one in this size as well and this will allow me to cut longer materials um, instead of having to cut them in half and then uh, put them on here one at a time. All right so on the card mat the first thing that you'll notice is that you have a protective film and this white area is extremely sticky and it's sticky for a reason. And also you have three different size places for your card stock to go. And your paper will always come in here on the left. So there's like a little pocket. And what happens is um, it'll stick to the sticky part and it'll cut or it'll cut and write all over the rest. So I'm gonna set this aside. Okay, I'm going to get my cardstock. Now, this is this was eight and a half by eleven, and I just cut it 
um, I cut it at five and a half this way, so this is still eight and a half, and I want to fold this in half. So I'm gonna bring in my little paper trimmer, okay? And so since the card needs to fold this way, I'm going to score it, all right, at four and a quarter. So eight and a half, cut in half, need is four and a quarter. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a bone folder to score. So this actually will line up here in this cutting groove and I, so I won't be using the cutting blade. I'll just be using my score um, line like this with the bone folder. Then I'll take that out and you can see that we've got the um, scored line. Then I will fold it to the back and use the bone now folder. I've got my little A2 sized card. All right, so this is four and a quarter by five and a half. All right, so it's really easy. You just stick this in that pocket and you always align it up at the top, top left. Okay, so just like that. In fact, these are the directions. It, it's a nice guide. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty self-explanatory um, if you just go slow and go through the, the directions. Okay, so then what happens is, is that when I fold this down, it's sticky and then this doesn't come up now. So, see? All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go back to Design Space and get the card ready for cutting. Everything on the screen looks good. We know the paper is good on the mat. I'm gonna click continue. It's going to connect to my machine. And then the materials pop up. My cardstock is actually more of a heavy cardstock. It's 110 pound. So when I clicked on browse all materials, I actually see all of this list of materials that I can choose from. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit heavy cardstock. And then I will click done. Okay, and we will, I'm going to do default pressure. Now normally when I do vinyl, I will click more pressure, but I'm going to go ahead and see what happens. Um, it is just paper, so if it doesn't come out exactly the way I want, I can just grab another sheet of paper. And it's telling me to load my pen first. So let's go load the pen. And you'll see underneath then it says coming up fine point blade. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the clamp and I'm going to take out the blade. And then I'm going to put the pen in and the joy is only use the joy pin so on the joy when you put the pin in it does have like an indented portion and it'll stop right here so put that in and close the clamp the next thing that the screen had prompted me to do was was to load my mat so i'm literally just going to put my mat in here as soon as the mat gets on the machine it automatically loads it pulls it out the back to measure, make sure you have the right sizing, and then it gets the blade or the pin ready for going. Okay, I just clicked go on my joy, and now it will draw that out. It's finished. The next step is to take the pin out and then load the blade in and then obviously I would hit the go button one more time. Now we have our machine has spit out the mat again. You can see all of the cuts. You can see the writing. 
And this is just ready for us to continue to the next step. So the next thing you do is that you will hit the unload button and it'll send your mat completely out. And I'm going to click done. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a box that will represent the inside of the card. So I'm going to come over here to shapes and I'm just going to grab a square and I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to unlock the size. So we'll do four and a quarter, oh, wrong, five and a half, four and a quarter. All right. Then I'm going to, actually, I had it right the first time. So let me just spin that. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change it to white just because my cardstock is white and I like to see, you know, exactly what's happening. And then um, we need to come up with some sort of sentiment. So I'm going to go to um, images and I literally can just do... Um, with deepest sympathy and I'm going to go with operation type and I want draw only and the reason why is because I just want the joy to write out a, a short sentiment for me all right I think I'm just going to go right here with my deepest sympathy and I'll click add to canvas and I'm going to bring that in Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to flip your card around so we can get this written on the inside. When you pull off your card, actually, let me get my little spatula. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bend my mat just a little bit and get the spatula up underneath there. And then I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to slowly separate the card from the mat. Okay, once you release your card from the mat and you have all of these things, then you literally just want to get your scraper and push them toward the top to get all right now we want the inside so I'm going to turn it flip it over like this and then I'm going to take the top and I'm going to stick that in and I'm just going to be careful with all those little element pieces there Okay, and then this will go down on that. Okay. And I know that I'm going to need my pen. So I'm going to go ahead and load the pen. Let's go back to Design Space. Okay, so back in Design Space, a couple things need to happen. I need to hide the original card or the original front of the card because we don't want it to do that again. And then I also, um, I need to hide that square. So this is the only thing that's left. And I'm going to go ahead and hit make. And we have our card mat. Confirm that. Okay. And so we got four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's basically going to write my sentiment in the middle for me. In fact, I don't even have to do anything. And then I will click continue. No matter, I'm not cutting anything this time. I'll just go ahead and choose medium cardstock. And it says to load the pen, which I have already done. I'm going to load the mat. And then it'll tell me to click on the go. Side is complete and I can click unload All right, and I will hit done 
Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle is to put my signature on the back. I'm going to hit save before I do anything else. I actually need to go and get that from one of my other projects. I'm going to go to my projects and I'm going to go find my card back. Okay, I'm going to do customize. This is the back of the card that I put when I am using my maker. And the joy only comes in with a black pen and I don't have any of the other pens. So I'm going to go and I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to hide this envelope for just a moment. Then I'm going to hit make. I'm still using a card mat. Confirm. And these two, I guess I didn't hide those. Let me hide these little elements here. Okay, this one needs to be rotated. I'm going to go ahead and... And like I said, I like to have it on the back of my card. And since the back of my card has to come to the front, it's actually going to... I'm going to be putting it in where it's upside down. So I'll need to have the writing done upside down. Let's go see what that looks like on the overhead camera. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. This will be the inside. And then we need the outside. Well, obviously I can't slide it like that. So I have to turn it upside down and then slide it in. I need the joy to write it upside down on here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and have that ready to load. All right, so you can see that my signature is upside down. It's relatively in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Okay, again, I'll just go ahead and choose medium cardstock. My pen is already loaded. I'm going to load the mat. Okay, then I'm going to hit go. Okay, so you can now see, let me move that out of the way, that my signature is now on the back of the card. I love it. Now, I guess I could always buy a rubber stamp, but I think this is this is great. We have the front, which we're going to be doing a card insert. We have the the um, sentiment on the inside, and we have our signature on the back. I need to put this back on. I'm going to do some washi tape. I'm going to put it on the front so that when I set this aside, then I know exactly. Okay, so this is on the clear part. So when I pull it off, this will be upside down over here, and then I'll know to put it back just like this. And I do this for my big mats as well. In fact, I did a um, little tutorial on that. Okay, all right, so we got this out of the way. I need to cut the insert. So we're going to use the regular standard grip mat. And I will just place that in the corner, just like always. And I do need to change out my pen for the blade. This card is four and a quarter by five and a half. And this particular insert is four and a half by three and a quarter. And let's go get a box that will cut okay out of this. I'm just going to use the same canvas that I was in for the card back. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that signature. And I'm going to get another square. And it's a, like a greenish blue. Okay, I do need to resize my square. I need it to be three and a quarter by four and a half. 
going to go ahead and hit make. I'm going to be using the standard mat. Okay. And I'm using the smaller one. So four and a half by six and a half. This is for the longer one. Click confirm. And I still got to hide these again. And I'm going to go down here. Okay. So this is the image of the piece of paper that I have on. This is what's going to cut out. I'm going to go ahead and load my mat. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, medium cardstock for this one. I do have my fine point blade loaded. I'm going to load the, into the machine. And then we will click go. That was super fast. I'll just move that over. All right, so just like our regular cutting mats, I'm going to bend it and pull this away. And hopefully I had my sizing correct. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on here right, right away. Okay, and then if I did my measuring right, and that will fit there. And these will fit down here. And then there is the front of the card. So that is super, super sweet. And it was re relatively easy. Okay, so let's go to the envelope. And again, I'm going to just use the standard grit mat. And what I like to do is put something down here in the corner. I'm going to go ahead and just load that. Okay. And I will be needing my pen one more time. All right, let's go back to Design Space one last time and get a little sentiment for this envelope. Okay, so I'm back in Design Space and I'm actually going to use this shape. It's um, a white envelope. You can leave it the way it is. And my envelope is quarter, and then there's my height. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a little sentiment. I think I'm going to do thinking of you, and I want draw only. I do like this one, but this matches the inside of the card. So... I think that I'm going to just choose that one and bring it in. Okay, so it's going to come over here, but I'm going to rotate it. Let's see, let's rotate it the other way. Okay, third time is the charm. And I need to just shrink that. It doesn't need to be very big. Okay, so I am going to be having it like this on the envelope. I do want to hide this square. Don't need that to cut out or anything. I'm going to go ahead and hit make. I'm going to use the standard grip mat, four and a half by six and a half, and hit confirm. And then I'm actually going to bring this down over here and I'm going to rotate this because. I just need it to put it in the corner of my envelope. So a little bit lower than five and close to the edge of the envelope. All right. And four and a half by six and a half chosen. Hit continue. All right, I'm just gonna do medium cardstock and already got the pen loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and load the joy. And we'll click on go. Okay, look how sweet that is. Let me unload this map. Okay, so look, that is super sweet. And then again, I'm just going to get an edge and flip this back just like my normal mats and then here's my envelope 
So I think that my first Cricut Joy project is been successful and I'll be able to get this sent out in the mail tomorrow. I would say that if you have things that are small um, and short little projects, you could definitely use the Cricut Joy. I have a, the Maker 3, which I absolutely love, and I use that for everything. But I thought that this would be great to have in the, in the event that I just needed a, a quick, simple card, and I could do this a lot faster and with less um, material. I hope that you um, enjoyed this video about what all the Cricut Joy um, looks like when you unbox it and how you put it together and working on a first project. All right, well, until next time, go ahead, make sure that you craft something beautiful every day, and I will see you in, in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.